All right, so this next little portion that we're going to cover will probably take us to, depending on how many questions we get asked, probably around 11 or so. At that point, we'll do a retro, and then we'll be break for lunch, and then I won't talk to you for the rest of the day unless you ask me any questions. Um, we're going to talk about classes in Ruby, which is a way to organize our code effectively. So yes, this goes beyond all the basics of like variables and stuff like that. And it's uh, it might blow your mind or you might find it really easy. I find people generally are in like polar opposite camps. It's either like, I don't understand this at all or like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. This is the last I section on Ruby, energy. On Ruby on the flat iron to learn. Yeah. It was like the last, very last section of the iron. You're yeah, intimidating yeah. me right now, actually, John. So I, I'm, you can, I've already placed myself in the latter category. <laughs> but I, yeah, I wouldn't. I've got, it, uh, I've got a lot of focus this morning. I have some strong comments. I'm going to get it. Cool. I take that coffee upstairs. It's like, it's good. There's some, some pretty much stuff that's kind of like it. All right. So I'm on my desktop here. I've created a file by doing touch. That's the Unix command to create a new file. And I've opened it up in Sublime. So it's just object-oriented programming example.rb. Now, the first thing you need to know about classes is that Ruby is an object-oriented language. So there's functional languages like JavaScript, and there are object-oriented languages like Ruby. Um, everything in Ruby is an object, literally every single thing, meaning that you can do um, like everything, including like strings and booleans and arrays, everything is a is a is an object, meaning that you can do dot something on it and it'll do it. So if I if I did like um, if I have an array of students, so if I do not Alex uh, uh, Alex is in the back, um, we'll just we'll just do three students. This is an this is an object. So if I do a equals underscore. Underscore means like the last thing that was just printed. It's a little, it's a little trick. Um, a equals underscore the last thing that was printed. Um, and I can I can do a whole bunch of stuff. I can call like dot shuffle on it. I can do dot pop on it. I can do a a dot shift. Anything that you can do like a dot something to it in Ruby is means that's an object. Um, every single thing in Ruby is an object though. Um, Classes are basically used to combine how data is represented and how we can manipulate the data that we're getting back. Uh, we already know a bunch of things, like this is not as difficult as it sounds. So there are classes inside of Ruby, which is basically just a way to organize all your code. Um, we have the array class, which is something that we're used to. So if we just did array.new, we get that new array. We also have hashes. We can do that hash.new, and then we get a brand new hash. So all the code that is written for arrays is just written in a Ruby class. So it has all the methods inside of it. Um, hashes are the same way. It's like a giant class, like a way to organize. Like we just organized it all in like one giant file, and then all the methods are inside of that as well. These are things that are pre-built into Ruby. Um, so. We know, we, there's basically these built-in classes like the arrays and hashes have built-in methods as well. Uh, so I have something like, let's say a equals array.new. So I have a, and it's this empty array. Uh, I can just push like a number at the end of it. What does is, what is push do? <laughs> just shove some stuff inside of the array. So. And when I push, now this, uh, now this array has the, the number one inside of it. The source code behind this could look a little something like, like this. Class array, and then def push, and, and, like, and then some code goes here. Like this could be, this could very well be like what is, uh, this could very well be like what the source code of, of the array class looks like. It's basically, I have a class, I'm organizing it in, in a class, and then all, this entire class has a whole bunch of methods on it called push, and you, it also has something called pop, and then some code would go there, and so on and so forth. All I have to, so basically it's, 
I'm just organizing it together in one class. I have a whole bunch of methods. I'm organizing it together in one class. Okay, this is already done. This is already, this done. Is already done for you. Yeah. Um, but as you've kind of recognized so far, most likely you're not going to be just writing algorithms for the next like 20 years of your life if you decide to make this a career. Um, there are like this probably goes beyond just writing algorithms over and over. You can think of a class, like a Ruby class, as basically a noun. Every single noun has attributes, right? Like um, people have attributes, dogs have attributes, buildings have attributes. Um, and it also has, every noun can also do things, like a dog can run, a cat can meow, um, a building can stand, I suppose. Like each noun has the ability to, to, for adjectives, things that describe it, and it also has verbs, things that it can do. So we're going to create a class together. We're going to get an idea of how like, we can organize code and how, how this will work. So uh, I just want people to name uh, your favorite animal. Dog. Dog. OK, that's the same one for the past two classes. <laughs> All right, so we have a class called dog. Uh, remember that every single dog can, has attributes to it, meaning like things that you can use to describe it. And every single dog also has nouns that it can do. Um, so we're going to initialize this dog with stuff. What are some, this initialize is basically like when I create a new dog, I'm telling it what attributes it has already. So what, what are some common attributes that dogs, all dogs have? Breed. They have a breed, that's right. What else? A uh, name, sure. And uh, one more thing. Age. Age. Cool. Um, let me do this really quick. All right. So this initialize method right here is the method that you use to create a new dog. The parameters that you're passing in, breed, name, and age, are traits or, or like adjectives, something you would use to describe um, that, that particular dog. And things that you know that you're going to use later in your code, something that every dog is going to have. Every dog has a breed, every dog has a name, and every dog has an age. Let's do something besides name because you see how all of these are these two are black, but this one's blue. Uh, it's because this was a protected uh, protected variable. Let's name it something else. What else does a dog have? Color. Color, sure. Coat color. All right, so you may be wondering why that we have this at symbol at the very beginning. Um, this at symbol is basically, uh, this makes it a variable in instance variable. So by having the at in the front, it makes it changes it from a local variable into an instance variable. Instance variables are basically attributes to a class. So every single dog has um, a breed. Every single dog has a code color. Um, yeah, instance variables are basically at the adjectives to your nouns. It only exists within that class. And it only exists within this class. So anywhere, so once at the moment I just, uh, so inside this class, since I, when I initialize, when I first create the dog, I give it a breed, a code color, and an age. The moment I put this at symbol in the beginning, this instance variable, now I have access to that breed, that code color, that age everywhere within this class. So if I were want to, if I want to tell the dog to bark, but tell me your breed, I can just call uh, my breed is at breed like this. So I declared it once right when I right when I created it, and then it is it um, has the ability to know what at breed equals. I mean, if you printed that, it would just return breed, right? Let's find out. The, let's yeah, do. Why can't you just do? Uh, let's call it. Uh, Doberman, black, and um, let's say that it's a three-year-old dog. D dot tell me your breed. 
and I'll put a P statement in the front so it prints out. Is that? I believe so. So I'll list everything. Okay, I'm going to run this OOP example. My breed is Doberman. Now, if I were to take away this, if I were to take away this at symbol right here, breed is now a local variable, um, and it doesn't know what the local variable is. So if I run this one more time, I get an issue. It says undefined local variable or method breed. So again, when I initialize a new class, when I create a new class, I tell, I give it attributes. Um, so remember, classes are nouns. The things you're passing in are most likely going to be adjectives or attributes to that, um, to that object, to that noun. And right away, I'm just saying at breed equals breed. It's not global, it's an instance variable, which means it's every instance of this dog, every new dog has the ability to know what at breed is, or at coat color, or at age. If, uh, if it wasn't, let's say it was just what's breed under that, under that uh, right there, and you did it without the at, would that work? Uh, you mean just like puts breed, like this? Yep. Without the, without the at mm -hmm. sign, right? Uh, it would not work. It's going to break on line nine. It says undefined local variable or method breed. So this is what, like, so now we're, we're starting to get into like different types of variables. Um, you have the local variables, which is just specific to whatever you, the context you're in. So breed is a local variable because there's nothing in the front of it. And it's only specific to this particular line right here. So if breed, if I didn't say like breed equals at breed or something like that, it wouldn't know what to do. But if I put this at breed in the front, because I've declared it right when I created it on line three, I am able to print it out. Is that no for? Uh, that's, that's what comes up after puts. So it's the ads now. are just uh, for initializing with new classes. So the ads are basically saying that it is going to be an instance variable. Okay. But it's not, it's only accessible when you call it dog dot something. Yes, it's, it is particular to one instance of that dog. Does, do, does that? Every instance or every instance of the dog? Every, every individual instance. So it's kind of like, let's, let's think of this in real life, right? We're all human beings. We all have names and we all have hair color, right? Um, when I ask, like, we are all instances of the person class. Like, we're all individual people. So, but every single person has a particular name um, and you're given that name, maybe you're given that name at birth, right? So when I asked Taylor about his name, he says, my name is Taylor. That's specific to him, but he knows what name means in, for his particular person. And when I asked Peter for his name, he's gonna say, my name is Peter. And that's particular to his instance of, of Peter. It's not saying like all, all men are named John or all women are named Jane or something like that. All right, so I create, I have this dog, which is basic, this class dog, which is basically just a way to organize all my code. This dog has certain attributes, like a breed, a coat color, and an age. I have it created it as an instance variable, which means I can access this particular variable, this at breed, this at coat color, and this at age, anywhere within this, this dog. Um, let's say if I wanted to create a method called uh, def breed, Def code color, def age. So um, I would just do at breed here. I don't know, a stupid question. Right? Yes. Is the at also just a convention or does the at actually a function? Can you just say breed, like breed equal breed one and equal to breed? Or would that breed be an instance variable? Or is the at, is the at just only convention or is it actually functional? Uh, the, the at is functional. But I can name this whatever I want. I can name this breed one, two, three. 
And then now I have the instance variable of at breed one, two, three everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna do uh, dog dot breed color, code color and age, code color and age. So again, class dog, class is basically just a way to organize your code to make it like reusable over and over. Um, classes are usually seen as nouns. Every noun has attributes, that's generally what you pass into it. So we just, we, there's obviously many more things to dogs than this. We decided on breed, code, color, and age. By creating this, by setting at breed equal to breed and at code color equal to code color, um, We've created these as instance variables. And I can call it anywhere within this class pretty easily. But I cannot call it outside the class like at age like this. So it will print out everything, and but it won't do, it won't actually print out, uh, it won't print out line 25. So let me move this up so that, so it's three Doberman black and then nothing happens for line 25 because you can't read it outside of the class. It must be inside of the class. There are things inherently that you know about yourself that other people may not know, unless you ask for it. So, how do you refer to this new instance of a dog? Um, D equals dog dot new. So I'm creating a new dog, and I'm passing in three arguments. The breed is going to be Doberman. The code color is going to be black, and the age is going to be three. Right, but this dog doesn't have a name, like a variable. Nice. You know, a, a variable would be. Our name equals John. That's the name of the variable. What is the name of that? Just instance? D. Just D. D. Yeah, I can name this dog as well. Oh, sorry. I just, okay. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. So I, I created a variable called dog. It's yeah. a local variable. Right. I did dog dot new, and I pass all these three three things in, and then I'm calling the, the method called age, which basically just reads age. I'm reading the, I'm telling it to give me its breed, which just reads the instance variable called breed, and same thing for code color. Um, you kind of notice, do you notice anything about these three methods? Kind of, they're, they're basically getter methods. Um, it basically just gets the variable for you. And this is kind of like verbose and long. You can kind of imagine, especially if we were doing, dealing with like a car class or something like that, Every car's got a make, model, year, VIN number, like Carfax, like uh, you know, all, like a whole bunch of stuff. You can just kind of see if I had 70 attributes, I would have 210 lines of extra code. So I, I'm actually going to shorten all of this. And these are uh, exactly what Deja said. These are getter methods. It's just saying, get me this data. That's all it is. So there's, a, there's something that we can shorten this down to. We will do adder reader for breed, coat color, and age. And if all goes well, I can delete these 10 lines of code, and I only have one line of code. So if all works, I'll see the same output, three Doberman in black. I still see three Doberman in black. So what did I just do? I took 10 lines of code, which were just basically saying like, when I have a method called <laughs> When I have, a, I have a method called breed, which just gets me the value of whatever at breed is. I have a method called code color, which just gets me the, um, the code color. What I've done is I've basically shrunk these nine lines of code into this one line of code on line two. This is called adder reader. Adder reader is basically attribute reader. So I'm reading the attributes of breed, code color, and age once I declare it on lines five through seven. Yeah. You can call you can call them in that dog variable without the deaths. Correct. Is this is not working. Correct. Yeah. So I can just run this, and then it'll print me um, three Doberman in black without those nine lines of code. What's the purpose of that semi colon syntax? The colon syntax. It's just how it's written. Um, 
the colon in the front of things in Ruby means that it turns it into a symbol. It, you, it unfortunately does not allow for like read or at read or something like that. The way that we write it is just with the colon in the front. But it still knows that you mean at read? Yes. Okay. Is adder reader specific to classes? Uh, adder readers are specific to that particular class. But like it's kind of like saying um, every single person has an ad attribute reader of. Um, is it anything that has been used as anything? Ad, yes. And it can pull that. Correct, yeah. So it's kind of like when, if you were thinking in real life, when you were born, somebody gave you a name. Um, that name was like, like given to you and you were initialized with that name. At a certain point, you're able to, like, when people ask you for your name, you're able to, like, read that from your memory. Oh, my name is John, my name is Peter, my name is David. Um, so what happens when your dog grows up and the, the age changes inevitably? Or if you have, like, an Australian Shepherd and they come out one way in the, in the color and then they change colors throughout their life? Right? That is something that happens quite often. Is some dogs, their coat color can change uh, pretty rapidly. Um, or let's see, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's add an extra one called name. And uh, it's kind of sad, but what if, some, what if you can, can no longer care for your pet and you need to give it up and somebody decides to rename your dog? Like these are things that are, have the ability to change. We have to be able to overwrite that as well. So here's what some of the code might look like. So let's say like at, uh, let's see, the breed will never change. The coat color could change. Coat, coat color. Will the at coat color equals new color? Yep. Uh, this is probably not the greatest one to put in here. Let's just do co-color and name for now. We'll, we'll do this uh, pet name. All right, so Going to name this. Uh, we'll name the dog Spot, and we're going to just print out dogs the dog's name, uh, pet name. So we haven't done anything new. We just created one extra attribute. Every single dog is created with a new name, uh, with a pet name, and we're, all we're going to do is just read that out. And again, we have this adder reader. So the moment we declare it here on line eight, we can. We, when we call it, we, it'll just know to read this particular instance variable. So I got three Doberman black and spot. Unfortunately, I have this, this Doberman is getting adopted by somebody else because I can no longer care for the Doberman. So the dog, the owner decides to name the pet name something else. So uh, what is the name of one of your dogs? Yeah, and it, does nobody have dogs? Stimpy. I don't have a dog. I wish I had a dog. Stimpy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reset the name here. And I'm going to print the dog's name one more time. Find someone with a cool name for dog. Fury. Okay. So basically, what I have here is everything the same as before. When I called the name on line 24, uh, I just printed out the original name, which is Spot. And then I decided to rewrite the pet's name as Simpy. And when I printed it again, it overwrote the instance variable. Now it is no longer known as Spot. There's no record that it was ever known as Spot. And now it's completely known as Simpy. But as you can kind of see, this sucks. Like, who wants to type like this? There's actually a shortcut for this one. So if there is an attribute reader, how do I, what do you think the thing for writing? Like you changer? An attribute changer? It's not it's attribute like changer. A, it's like <laughs> What's that? It's a. It's definitely. It's so. It's a setter method, but it's not attribute setter. It's a attribute writer. So for coat color, and for age, that's something that can change. 
So again, when I want to overwrite an attribute of the of the original, like after I've declared it, I have the ability to do that by just saying add, 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 adder writer, and then this, and then the code color. Put the microphone over here so I can hear more questions. Wait. So how would you call that? Like how would you change, actually change it? So when I do adder writer code color and age, this is shorthand for this. Uh, it's not age. It's that name. And then like so on the other ones, we're able to just call it with like dot read dot whatever dot mm -hmm. code color. How do we actually like change the code color using the adder writer? You know what I mean? That's what I'm doing right here. Oh, okay. I'm on the line twenty six. So I have the pet name. And then, oh, you're just reassigning. And then I'm reassigning oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. the pet name to something else. Yeah, gotcha. so I'm going to erase all of this and get rid of this gross ugliness. And if all goes well, I can run this again with Ruby OOP example and get this exact same output. Wait, so you would. So for the, the writer, mm -hmm. you're just putting equals something. But what if I want a function that's actually like, let's say if I'm populating something? So I will write it out then. Uh, can you expound a little bit? So I don't know. That, I don't know. Ruby's just really simple, so it's confusing because it's just you just put that. But I'm like, what if I want to actually do something? Like I want to actually, I want to set something, and it's an object, but it actually needs like, let's say if it's an array of something. Okay. Then I couldn't do that array. I would have to like just expand it. Right? Just be like a function, like that's you know a dog saying? method like, or something. Like, it, like if I wanted, like if the object is like more complicated, just equals something. Um, like a method on dog, right? Oh yeah, so, actual, so it just be a function. So right now we're just dealing with uh, we're just dealing with like adjectives and like stuff like that. We'll get to fun, uh, methods on the on the dog in just a, just a second. Um, I kind of want to, yeah. Right now I just want to kind of go over attribute reader and writer. Um, now what you're going to recognize is that some some attributes are both readers and writers. Like you kind of see like coat color appears both in the reader and the writer, we can actually combine those again uh, even more through something called adder accessor. Accessors are, have the ability to access both the read and write uh, capability. So all I got to do is add code color, and I think, oh, that's not what I want. Code color, and I believe pet name was the other reader and the writer. And then I can get rid of this whole line because it's inside the accessor. And we can get rid of code color. And we can get rid of pet name. So again, adder reader is just tell me the attributes, things that probably won't change. The breed of a dog will never change once it is born. And they, oh, the age is definitely going to change. Uh, And um, so the breed will never change on a dog when you create it. Like that's what it's born with is what it's going to be. Um, and then the accessor is basically tell me what your code color is, but also know that that code color can change and I can overwrite it. Same thing with the pet name. I give you a pet name to begin with so you can tell me what it is. You can respond to spot. The later your new owner might rename you as Stimpy for some reason. And then you'll have to, uh, then you have to, tr you can retrain yourself to respond to Stimpy. And same thing with the age. What's your age today? What's your age going to be tomorrow? If all goes well with this, I can just run it and everything will look the same. What, what, I don't know if you talked about this, but you're going to see this one. Why doesn't it overwrite spot? It does. You're still printing out the spot and it's thinking. Yeah, so let's mix, let's take a look at what I'm, so I'm creating a new dog, a, a local variable called dog. I'm creating a new instance of the class dog. I'm initializing it with four arguments. The Doberman's gonna, so it's gonna go with the breed, black is gonna go with the code color, and age is gonna go with three, and spot is gonna go with pet name. I'm printing out the age, the breed, the code color, and the pet name for the first four. So three Doberman, black, and spot, basically everything that I've initialized the dog with. And then on line 20, I'm overwriting the name uh, from spot into Stimpy. So when I say, hey, print the dog's pet name one more time, 
is that last thing comes up and it's Stimpy, like Spot no longer exists. The new name is now Stimpy. I thought, I thought when these readers go through the code, they go through it twice. I don't believe that. About hoisting? But it's still an order from the print calls. But and then the variable very assignment, very it's, not gonna, it's not going to hoist the variable, it's function. And that was, oh, does, 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 does Ruby uh, hoist as well? No, that's JavaScript. No. So, oh, that's hoisting. Uh, there's probably hoisting, but I'm over, <laughs> since I'm rewriting, I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. I'm not, well, maybe it's like the, well, what it would return, but what it would return for, just which would stink you, but since you're printing it, that's, uh, I don't really know what the question is. I mean, like at the very end of what you return? Yeah, like so now, yeah, if you're returning now, if you return pet name now, now it'll be At the very end? <clears throat> yeah. 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 So if you did it before, none of that stuff would happen. Turn just cuts everything else off. Right? Yeah, but at the end. It would be simple. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was getting uh, out of the seat. It's just because of the print lines. It's happened yeah, twice. Yeah. Print that name, print that name. Both are coming out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, let's let's move on to like verbs, like you were saying. Like what are what are some things that dogs are able to do? Right now I'm just giving it some attributes and it's telling me to read and write those attributes. Um, what or what are some give me three things that dogs can do? Bark. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> to also page. So bark, dogs can definitely do this. Dogs can sit. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do it for like in, in programming land, but I guess. And then age, I'll keep for a little bit later. All right, so. I'm going to keep everything the same and I'm going to add all of these new things. So I'm going to do p dog dot bark, p dog dot sit, p dog dot sleep. Now oh, sleep is a is a protected thing. Sleep all the time. All right, so we have all the things from before, and now it also has verbs. It has the ability to bark. When I call it, it's going to return this, this block right here, which is just bark as a string, and then sit, and then ZZZ. Z, Z. Um, let's go back to the question that you had a little earlier, Deja, and let's, let's see it in real life. What was the question one more time? Um, oh, okay. Um, but now I'm like wondering, so we're in this class. Mm -hmm. I guess you're probably gonna show us how if we have another file, how we're gonna, I don't know what it is, we need to import this class so I can call instances of this variable. Um, that one is, I probably won't do that. Um, oh, so we're not gonna. It's, it's, but it's going to be require relative. Oh, okay. And then the name of the file. So like, it would be like OOP example. And then you have the ability to call it in another file. Keep it up there for now. That's how you can like put it. You have to export it too. You don't need to export it. That is that is the difference between um, between JavaScript and Ruby. All you have to do with Ruby is just say like require this file, and then you have access to everything inside that file. JavaScript is a little bit more secretive, where you're like like you require you still have to link to the other file, but you have to put that whatever you want to export into the exports like object and that only that can be trans transferred. It's a little bit more secure, but this one is based in Ruby and we're gonna do most mostly Ruby stuff for the next few weeks. Um, it's just basically require the file, you have access to everything inside the file. <coughs> um, so this, this thing called age bang is basically a method that I'm going to basically tell the dog that I'm going to change its age. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do uh, at age 
plus equal one. Dog dot age and p dog dot age. Oh crap. Oh no. Um what happened here? Mm. It doesn't have an age yet. Or no, it does. It does. So because that's the first thing that gets printed. Yep. On line 27, it says, uh, I'm trying to add a integer into a string. So let me just pass it in instead. Instead of a string, I'll just pass it in as a number. Okay. Good God, what happened here? Um, why is it coming out twice? Can't. Oh, it's this require relative. I'm, I'm running it twice. Here we go. So I initialized it with all of these attributes. The age is going to be three. And it comes all the way down to here. I'm telling this dog to age on line 44, which means I'm adding one to this at age right here. And then when I call dog.age again, I'm actually overwriting what used to exist with this at age um, at, by adding one to it. And then that's, that's what shows up here. Exclamation mark. The exclamation mark is convention for when you're changing something. Uh, I'm going to tell this dog to speak. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Pet Name, and I am a breed. I have a coat color coat and am blank. All right, let's get this last one out there. So p dog dot speak. All right, so what I've got for this last one is basically a method that reads all of these attributes that I've already created. Um, it says, hello, my name is pet name. Pet name looks up into the reader, the adder readers or the adder accessors and basically looks, okay, what is my, what is my current pet name? Like that's an attribute that I've been assigned. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, and then it continues on, I am a breed. Jumps up to here, sees that it's an adder reader. It knows that it's going to just read whatever the value of the at breed is going to be. And then continues on the code color and the age, um, like the most recent age. So again, just to kind of reiterate one last time and then we'll kind of take a break and then we'll do what's called a retro. Um, uh, organizing your code into classes makes it more reusable. So when you think about arrays and hashes and everything, everything was written more or less like this. Uh, I'm not sure what the source code of it actually looks like, but if you were to, oftentimes, especially with today, you're gonna create, recreate a boggle board. Has anyone played boggle before? Long time ago? Well, there's, there's a Wikipedia um, there's a Wikipedia like article of how to how to play the game, but it's organizing your code in classes is essentially just like I'm going to reuse this stuff over and over again. Um, the classes, the names of the classes are generally going to be nouns, uh, so it's going to be like class dog or class cat or in your case today class boggle board or class player or something like that. Um, each one of these, each one of these nouns has attributes, things that you like things that it knows about itself, adjectives more or less. That's what's gonna go inside of the initialize up here. Um, this at symbol changes, it is called an instance variable, meaning that this particular instance of dog, whatever, whatever dog that you're creating, knows that about its at read, 
know about knows about its at color and at age and at pet name. Um, every single method, every single class also has verbs that it can do, methods that it can do, like bark and sit and sleep all the time. It can age as well, and it can also speak, like hello, my name is blah blah blah. And finally, these last two, th these last three things here. Adder Reader is allows you to basically avoid writing extra code like this, def read, app read. I created a method here that just basically reads a variable. That's kind of a waste of space and a waste of you know brain energy. So what, what they've decided to do is that if it's if it's a method that just reads an attribute, like just reads an instance variable, you can throw that inside of adder reader and delete these three lines. Uh, similarly, if you have something that you're going to overwrite, like a name or a code color or something, um, if you're going to overwrite something, this is what the typical like Ruby code looks like to overwrite some attribute. I'm passing in a new coat color and I'm overwriting at coat color to be the new coat color. This is kind of a pain in the butt to type. It's ugly to look at. So they made it an adder reader, an attribute reader, something you can uh, attribute writer, something you can overwrite. If something is both a reader and a writer, then it becomes an adder accessor, something that you can access both <coughs> read and write. Um, I'm going to stop here. Are there any questions on this, which I'm sure there will be. <laughs> Is that going to be posted? Yeah, I, I can post this.